Now I realize that at this focal, at this range on the camera, that you can't clearly read any of the labels, but you can see the the digital antenna switch panel up here, and the uh, switch and uh, indicator panel here on the Alpha 87 below it, which are the two areas involved in in programming for the digital antenna switch. Now let's. What I want to do is go through this sequence and program each of the bands via the 87 front panel for the desired antenna so that thereafter the selection will be automatic. Now, as a default starting condition, I've programmed this so that uh, all of these bands will start out at F6, which for which I have no antenna or, or even box connections. Okay, to program 10 meters, to always select when, go, when the amplifier goes to 10 meters, the tribander, which is antenna A1, as I showed before, you simply select 10 meters manually, or it could be done automatically, but it's, this is all that's required. Select it manually. We're going, I'm going to press the enter button, and while the LED is flashing, which is about three or four seconds, I'm going to press A1. Now, for this purpose, these nine band buttons are double labeled, like some of the buttons on the, an on the antenna selector. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and also A, B, C, D, E, and F. So, A1 is two pushes on the left-hand button. The, the, the 160 meter button is button number one and also A. Again, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, A, B, C, D, E, F. All I do is push enter, while the light is flashing, press A1, and you will see the antenna selector switch to A1 to confirm that it's happened. And the light will also go out on the enter button at the moment I push the 160-meter uh, button the second time, or the number one A button the second time. So here we go. We're on 28 megs, the band we want to program. We want the A1. Press enter, press A, press 1. The light goes out. The antenna switch has gone to 1A or A1. That's programmed. Now for 15 meters, I'm, I'm going to jump around. For 15 meters, there's 21 megs. I also want A1, so I do the same thing. For 20 meters, I want D4, so I go to 20 meters. And I, D4 is also, it happens, is the same button, D4. So there, D4, that's programmed. 40 meters is the first case here where it's in the same button by sheer coincidence. 7 megahertz, I want B1, which is B1. I do it like this. I try to do it from above so you can see this light go out. Press enter, press B, press 1. And the antenna switch has confirmed it's B1 programmed. Now, I'll pick up 80 and 160 for which no antennas currently exist and all the work bands likewise and route them to the dummy load, which is C3, which will be two pushes of the third button here. So let's just do this in order. We'll start with 160. I want C3. And likewise, 80 meters. I want C3. Uh, likewise, each of the work bands, 10 megahertz, uh, 18 megahertz, and 24.5 megahertz. C3. So we're all programmed. Now I'll run through the band push buttons, manually change bands, and you could confirm by watching up here that the bands do, antennas do change as programmed. For 10 meters, we should have A1. There it is. For 1.8 megs, 160 meters, we should have C3. For 7 megs, we want B1. We have it. For 14 megs, we want D4. There it is. 21 megs, A1. And I won't, I won't finish them. The rest of them are, are, of course, on the dummy load. If I've done this correctly now, as I switch from one band to another, I'm just going to leave the transceiver on sideband on box, and I will switch from one band to another, from one end to the other, and we should have a proper antenna, matched antenna at all points. And you'll be able to see the band selection here. I'll read it out as I go. This is 28 megacycles, megahertz, 10 meters, we're on A1. Let's go to 80 meters, 1, 2, 3, 4. C3 is correct, the dummy load. 20 meters, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's D4, the big 20 meter Yagi. 
uh, let's go to 7 megs for uh, B1, the 40 meter beam. I'm not sure it's matched on this frequency. We'll find out. 1, 2, 3, 4. Hello, test. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. B1, the 40 meter beam. So now, if I'm, let's just say it's the last weekend in October and you're working a string of JAs on Saturday night on 15 meters. Let's go to 15 meters. One, one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm on 15. And I'm working a string of JAs. And my packet cluster spot beeps and tells me that there is maybe CR9 AA on 70, 70, 70, you know, somewhere on 40 meters. I press the appropriate function button, a transceiver, and you know this is, this is the way uh, Sirius DXers are operating, many of them these days are contesters. I press the function button on the computer keyboard, the transceiver automatically goes to 7 megs and to the proper frequency. I have to do it manually here. I'm, uh, I'm on 7157 for transmit as it turns out. So uh, let, let's, let's go back to 21 minutes, megs a second and, and run through this again. The packet cluster is, pops up. I say to the guys I'm working on 21 megs, uh, QRX 15 seconds, I'll be right back. I push the function button, go to 7 megs, say hello 7 megs, CR9 AA. I work him for maybe, what, 8 seconds, 10 seconds, uh, on, 20, on 40 meters it might take 15, 20 seconds, uh, pick him up, I'm through with him, say, seven, say 73 on, uh, uh, to CR9A, uh, QRZJA, back on 15 meters. Now that wasn't a very smooth demonstration because I didn't have the packet, I mean the, uh, the CT system to, to do even the transceiver. Uh, resetting for me automatically, but the point is antennas and all here I am on 15 meters with the tribander doing my thing or actually when I get the 15 meter beam up using it, which would be different, it isn't programmed at the moment I go to 7 megs just that fast, make a contact and I'm back on 15 meters just that fast at full power all of these bands, 50, I mean both of these bands, 15 and 40, for practical purposes are essentially dead right at this point today. So uh, not causing anybody any significant trouble, to, to be sure. Now the antenna that's selected via the front panel of the Alpha 87, as I've just demonstrated, is entered into memory, and that will be the antenna that is automatically selected any time the amplifier is driven to that band, it switches automatically to that band. If, however, I want to switch antennas, if I have a contest station with several different antennas on 20 meters, or in my case, the tri-bander as a backup or as a comparison reference, I'm now on, on the large Yagi on 20, hello test. I can manually switch to the tri-bander on 20, hello test, just like that. And after making a comparison in, in a matter of a fraction of a second, go back manually to the other antenna. This is W4ETO. Now the other capability of the Alpha 87A that's extremely useful to some owners is that it can be completely remotely controlled via its RS-232C serial communications link. This means you can turn the amplifier on and off, can even tune it, monitor its operation, change bands and the like from a computer, which is what I will demonstrate here, from a, via a telephone line using modems, even over the air, uh, say on 420 megahertz with an RF link. 